What up my freaks, Renaissance Sight here with part 6 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Belagar Iron Hammer campaign. So as we saw last time, Belagar moved to Bitterstone Mine in the Wasteland, breaking the Orc Hordes that stood in his way, and by the looks of it, leaving just the one big stack to the Bloody Hands. If we manage to win the next fight at Dragonhorn Mines, we should be able to break the faction for good, which should be pretty great. In fact, should happen this turn if we manage to pull off the win. Before we get to it, however, I do want to spend the Oath Gold, as I have asked you guys for suggestions in the comments uh, for the previous episode episodes, so we'll be starting off with spending it. Now, in terms of what we want to try here, I, oh wait, wrong thing, uh, for the character runes, I do want to try the, where are you, I do want to try the Master Rune of Spite. I'm not entirely sure whether it'll be effective or not, but I would like to experiment and uh, see. And basically there was some discussion as to whether the amount of damage from this little Mortis Engine effect will be sufficiently... Uh, sufficiently useful in terms of damage considering the massive amount of HP uh, that the enemy or that the enemy that units have in SFO in general as it's quite different uh, than vanilla um, but I guess we're about to find out uh, so let's get you the master rune of spite and if it needs some adjustment, well then, at least, uh, at least we'll know. Uh, next up, I think I want to get the Rune of Fear. This is one of my ideas, but based on the, uh, uh, based on my experience with followers that cause enemy leadership reduction in my Draka campaign, for those who watched it, causing armies to rout extremely quickly when, uh, uh, when the Wood Elves use their ancillaries to do the same thing. Granted, we're limited to three, but there may be other methods to acquire more enemy leadership reduction. I think in the early game, especially against the Orcs and the Skaven, a minus nine leadership should be pretty darn useful. And I guess, uh, I guess we'll see. And the spell resistance uh, couldn't hurt either, though the fear would be wasted on the uh, Dwarf units. Lastly... We have two options. We could try a Rune of Burning to pop the uh, explosive damage and additional leadership reduction onto our catapult. Granted, it is only one, but we could... Uh, well, we'll probably be getting more artillery pieces later on. And it may be useful for, you know, severely increasing our leadership damage to enemies. The other option is an Aura Rune. There are several that could be useful here, namely the Master Rune of Stromni Redbeard, which gives us an Aura of Leadership and Melee Attack plus 5, which would be quite helpful for the uh, uh, for the Rangers in Melee. And of course there is the Rune of... there was another one, but I don't remember what it's called. It gives us missile resistance, basically, in a, a small area. It's in here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Master Rune of Grugni. 10% uh, ward save for the assigned unit, as well as missile resistance plus 20% for everybody. So uh, that would also be helpful for ranged exchanges for our rangers. Uh, that said, I think we're going to go with the Master Rune of Grugni. For, or not Grugni. Uh, Master Rune of Stromni Redbeard, wherever it is. First... The melee attack plus 5 for all the units around this uh, unit would be pretty darn useful. It would probably only apply to the three front-facing units, but it'll help them act as a melee line. So we're gonna go with that. Plus, I suppose if our other melee units stand close enough, we could also uh, get some value out of it on the melee. So, let's quickly assign all these and then we'll attack. Uh, you can have a Rune of Fear for now, but we'll probably swap these around. And you can take the Master Rune of Stromni Redbeard, as it is a banner rune, into your army. Then we can get another Fear Rune on the Thane, or one of the Thanes. Like so, and we'll put the Master Rune of Spite on the other Thane, mostly because the other Thane has more HP. So, Master Rune of Spite on you, and Rune of Fear. And I like the idea of putting the Master Rune of Spite on one of the Thanes, since we have two of them, as it'll help us figure out whether it's effective. Uh, we might as well also spend our points. Let's get get your shields up, Dowie. I think we're going to lean into being uh, better melee units on the Rangers, not just range units. And you also have another point, so let's get your Blade Shield as well. Alright, a little bit more defensive. Master Engineer, you are going... well, you already have Wandering Spirits, but we're gonna get you Triangulation. 
on the way to Zufbar 42 Pounders. Runesmith, you have one point to spend, and I guess we're gonna go with Rune of Pres Preservation. Yes, the casualty or punishment rate for Rangers would be useful in the early game, but I think later on, the armor will tell. And at 60 armor, the regular Rangers are fairly low in armor. Lastly, we're going to go for Merciless Reclamation to further increase the melee capabilities of these guys at the cost of speed. Hopefully I won't come to regret it, but, uh, well, it's still a Dwarfen army, so I don't expect it to be super fast. And Blade Shield for you as well. And then lastly, Belagar, I believe we're holding on to the points that we can get Rally the Holds, so we will continue to do so, so that we can apply all the points that we can into Tunnel Warfare as fast as possible. Alrighty, well, that's it. The stuff has been applied. I don't think that there's anything else that we need to do right now, or rather there's probably some admin, but I think we'd rather get the fight going. So, to Dragonhorn Mines we go. Should be about uh, maybe two full stacks altogether here, something along those lines. Should be a fun time. Let's give the Master Rune of Stromney to, let's say, you. And do we keep the Ancestor Rune on one of you? Yeah, why not? Why not? We could give it to the Hammers, but frankly they are fairly low in model count and they're mostly just useful right now to act as a uh, uh, act as a blocking line for these guys not to do the damage, so I think it's fine as it is. Alrighty, happy with that, let's get to it. Valiant defeat according to the battle results. Let's see how the enemy stands up to our pile of rangers. Yes, yes to the destruction of the Bloody Hands. Alrighty, the last major stack that they have currently on the map. And here we go, trying to defeat it before its reinforcements arrive. Obviously, the uh, the Rangers have deployed via Vanguard deployment forward in order to try to do some damage to the enemy before the reinforcements get here and to hopefully force them to attack us uh, rather than in a massive blob with the reinforcements just by themselves. Not sure whether it's going to work, but it has worked in the past, so I don't see why it wouldn't work here. Obviously, our melee units are not here and are all rushing forward together with our lord and heroes, so the rangers will have to hold the line in melee for at least a little while. Here come the charges of the uh, goblin wolf riders, though I don't imagine they're going to be super effective in melee against the rangers. We shall see. And there we go, we got a, uh, forget what the name of the ability is, something bomb, flash bomb ability comes down to reduce that melee defense on those poor goblin wolf riders uh, down to zero, which should certainly help the rangers who have lost a few models due to that charge, though it is difficult to say as to whether it was in fact the charge uh, that killed them or whether it was friendly fire from their other ranger friends. Fortunately though, with the uh, foe seeker activated and the rune of speed activated, King Lun moves at 61 speed speed, which is faster than an ogre for a dwarf, and even the hammers are fairly quick with just the rune of speed at 45, so uh, they're rushing into battle to try to help out these rangers, and there we go. The hammers have arrived, the ghosts are here, Belagar is also moving forward, and the rangers should be more or less safe. Lovely. And getting those Mork's gazes up upon our um, back lines, a little bit annoying from the enemy, but not doing a crazy amount of damage as yet. The enemy is still milling around back here and isn't actually moving forward other than with the units of its cavalry that have now been pretty much destroyed. And we uh, have our good position now and are set up to do whatever we damn well please. I've also told the grudge there was to attack ground right here where the enemy is moving out onto the uh, field with the hopes of damaging a few while they're all blobbed up. Let's see if that works out. And uh, let's see if the anthill gets kicked. It does seem that the enemy is starting to move towards us, so I guess it'll be another episode of ripping enemies apart with quarrels. Though I do imagine we're going to see a lot of those before the campaign is done. At least with Belagar's army. 
As this is likely to be the only army that is completely reliant on rangers, this is the one that's going to do most of this. Although I'm sure there will be at least one army that has a, a quarrelers as well. Anyway, there we go. It looks like our dwarf warriors are going to stop the enemy in its tracks here. Uh, together with Halkenhaf and Thrani. I'm not entirely sure whether, because I forgot, uh, whether this is going to be super effective on the Rune of Spite in terms of how quickly these guys are going to run away rather than stay in melee. So I'm not entirely sure whether this will be a great test of it or not, but we'll see. We'll see. And a Rune of Wrath and Ruin coming in, and damn, that thing always does so much damage to those poor uh, basic infantry. Neither the Gabos nor the Savage Orcs can stand against them. You gotta love how that tiny number of uh, dwarf units can hold a line like this, though. Yeah, if we had a few units of, uh, of Iron Breakers, just like two of them, that would be our, probably be sufficient to hold back an entire uh, blob of enemies. Uh, Belgar's still fighting, and the enemy is still unable to reach our melee line. Most of their first army is, in fact, very badly beat up now. Belgar dueled the Goblin Big Boss and just sent him running extremely quickly as well. And I do believe it'll be the reinforcements uh, that are going to be the major part of this fight now, because the first army has been basically destroyed. Lovely. Gotta love those rangers. Already nobody's firing. Oh, okay, there we go. For a second I didn't see any corals hitting the trolls and I was extremely disappointed, but it looks like now uh, they're getting ripped apart as well, especially with our, uh, uh, our heroes working on them. And away they go. Alrighty, but here come the reinforcements to take their place. Kill one orc and one gabo and a hundred more take their place, which is why the wasteland uh, was overrun in the first place. And why all those dwarf holds fell. Alrighty, it does look like a decent amount of the enemy are shattered, but another decent amount is coming back and rallying, so it looks like we're going to be hit from two angles simultaneously. We have thus far then switched our units so that half of our rangers are facing this way towards the incoming reinforcements, and the other half is facing this way towards those units that might rally. We are, however, going to be sending most of our heroes out this way together with our hammers to try to hold the ground. Grudge thrower throwing them grudges around. And here comes the counter charge with one of our heroes, or two of our heroes actually, acting as a melee line, whereas the hammers are working together with King Lund back here and his dual axes. And he is still pretty hurt, so we do have to be careful with him, but he's not really afraid of a single unit of uh, savage orcs. No, I guess there's a lot more than a single unit here. And once again, they are now failing to reach our melee lines, who are just, or our ranged lines, or rather, who are just absolutely a wrecking face. Uh, we also do have that uh, rune of um, Stromny Redbeard active, which puts our units at least up close, up to, let's see, 42 melee attack. And I guess just for this one particular unit, up to, uh, uh, up to 50, which is pretty damn solid. This will be a very nice rune on our Bugmans later on. I'll actually be curious to see how effective the maxed out Bugmans are going to be in melee. Oh, one of our Dwarfen Warriors loses their heads and I see the corpse of another one lying there. We're starting to run out of Dwarf Warriors and it looks like we're going to have to move them away. They are very, very low HP, down to 700, considering the uh, total amount of HP and SFO in general. Uh, that's basically nothing. And let's see if we can get them to survive, though I suppose if they do die at the end of the day it's probably not going to make too much of a difference, as we were going to replace them eventually anyway. Another Rune of Wrath and Ruin coming down, non-overcast on top of those enemies, and we got the rest of our ghostly units moving in to see them off. Otherwise it looks like on this portion of the map the reinforcements have also been primarily seen off, and the Hammerers can now return and take the place of the Dwarf Warriors that decided to rout. You, sh you could have fought to the death. Alright, 14 units left though. It does look like the unit will remain viable. I don't remember what the percentage is in uh, Warhammer... Uh, in Total Warhammer 3, rather. But I guess we'll find out eventually. 
And there we go. I don't think the enemy has enough unit mass at this point to actually get to our lines again, and it looks like the chain route may be here. The rest of the army shatters, and once more, an orky horde is broken. Looks like our rangers primarily escaped this unscathed. A few of them took a little bit of damage, but certainly not enough not to heal over a single turn, with the possible exception of this one unit. Oh, lovely. And this whole vigorous thing is really great on the rangers as well. Out of melee, uh, you recover your, uh, uh, you recover your vigor. And these guys are fresh as well. Hmm. Kind of surprising considering how long they fought, but anyway. And we're going to try to chase down a little bit this Night Goblin War Boss. Nubzub, I believe, is the lord that was outside of the settlement, but our our units are far, far too slow to actually chase him down. He actually only moves at 35, and when we use the Rune of Speed, these guys do move quick, but with only access to a single Rune of Speed, it just doesn't last long enough for us to catch him. And I think even with the speed buffs, we wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't be fast enough. Plus, of course, there's the Massive amount of HP, and that is uh, that needs to be considered. Anyway, yet another heroic victory for Belagar. I guess uh, the dwarves will probably view everything to be heroic in terms of retaking uh, the Badlands. Did I call it the Wastelands before? Uh, the retaking the Badlands from the orcs, and uh, well, as well they should. Uh, let's see the damage on us, and uh, let's see whether we can take Ekrand immediately after. All right, there we go. Nothing but heroics, apparently, for Belagar and his army. And, hey, that puts him up to level 12. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. We also got a free banner of swiftness, so perfect vigor, which is great on additional units. I guess we will... Well, I mean, maybe for now we'll give it to either Belagar or to the Hammers, but uh, obviously the Rangers will get it afterwards. Let's see. We got... Huh. If we could sack it, we'd get more Oath Gold, which would be great, but we are occupying this province. We can't move any further anyway, so we can't uh, we can't afford not to occupy it. Alrighty, enemy killed in battle. Beautiful. Belgar's got his banner. Scaf Hogmog is gonna move into Bitterstone Mine, so that if Glugzag it tries to attack it, then he'll fail. I suppose he could jump over to Stone Mine Tower, but, uh, well, let's just hope that he doesn't. Oh, we shall see. I suppose these two could try to attack Bitterstone together. I wonder if Scaff would survive. We got you because you have the recruitment cost reduction, so Scalf the Recruiter. I should just double check. Wait, you are Constructor for Brow. You know what? Let's just rename you to Recruiter Scalf. A Recruiter Scalf Hogmog. I guess we'll keep his. I guess we'll keep Hogmog in there. All right, and hey, we got the Ekron Miners available now. Right, right, right. I remember that from last episode. Wait, I thought it said Belagar was at rank 12. Did it not? Am I crazy? I swear it said rank 12, but he's not. <laughs> it lied. Why would you lie, game? That is... Uh, I don't appreciate that. Well, I guess we'll then get the... And we'll get Filth Slayers, but we'll keep the rest of the points for Tunnel Warfare. I gotta go back over the video. Man, maybe it did say 11 and uh, I've gone completely insane. Oh well, uh, let's see. Now we're not going to recruit anything here for obvious reasons. Our Rangers will be pretty much at full health after healing, even if our other units not so much. Uh, let's see what we gotta do in terms of admin before ending the turn. Alright, there is the concern that Orion might try to attack Bufdar, but he also, as you guys noted, might be trying to attack Skaven Blight and uh, moving towards them. He doesn't like us a crazy amount. But we are at war with his enemies, so maybe. Uh, in fact, wait, who's he at, is he at war with anybody else now? What would this cost again? More than we can afford, that's what it would cost. Okay, well I guess we ain't doing that then. Uh, Karak Hearn, you're ready for an upgrade on those iron mines. We've got Matorka and stuff. Mm, nothing needs to be built, Buftar, you're fine. So I guess what we'll do is we'll jump Constructor Furrowbrow over to Karak Hearn. And we will hope that we don't get attacked. Iron Mine, upgrade you, save 300 gold that way. 
And somebody did suggest to keep spamming upgrades uh, for uh, Ancestral Bloods that give us a research rate. I do wonder whether that'll actually work if they're deleted, as in whether you can actually increase that. So we're at 130 now. And, well, I guess we're not going to be deleting this lord. Do you have research? No, you do not. Wait, so who's giving us research? Why do we have 130%? We're getting it from Constructor Furrowbrow. Mm, and we're getting 25% extra from somewhere else, I guess. Alrighty, so what we'll do is try this. We're going to pop you in. Wait, no. You in, Fimber Iron Hammer. And we'll pop you in right here at Kergupta. That'll give us additional research rate up to 35 and we'll delete you shortly. I'm going to keep you there for one turn just in case Orion decides to attack Karak Buftar. It won't help, uh, but, uh, well, I guess it'll help kill a few more units, even if it won't stop the enemy from taking it over if he desires to do so in this particular situation. Gelty is also down here, so hopefully he continues to attack the pirates and the Skaven, and everybody gets nice and friendly while we deal with our own situation down south. Uh, ooh, wow. Yeah, looks like uh, the Exiles of Corn are certainly advancing. They have six territories to their name already. It would be a little bit annoying if they decided to attack us or uh, declare war on us right now because we really want to head to Eight Peaks. Uh, but if we have to defend against them, we'll probably keep Recruiter Scaff's army here to do that while Belagar takes a quick trip to Eight Peaks nonetheless. Anyway, uh, let's end the turn. I don't believe there's anything else to do. I guess we could check diplomacy if we really wanted to. And Oh, wow. Western Badlands is generating 1,022 money. Oh, because we have the, uh, the Trinket Maker here as well. Uh, yeah, I guess this place, if nothing else, is going to continue collecting income. The growth is terrible. But at least for the next few turns, we'll collect income. We'd probably want to switch at some point between you and Karakazur, which is also generating a, a nice amount, but we'll wait a little bit until the uh, barley fields are a little bit more up and running. And then we'll do that. Alrighty, diplomacy. Quick deal. So. Anything else? Uh, Sterland is willing to go for a little bit of an agreement. I don't yes. see why not. Vissenland is willing to trade. Sigma's will. Averland is nearly willing to go for military access, and it looks like they are surviving, at least right. for now. Border Princes, we don't care about you. Confederation, oh wow. Minus 9.3, that is really not so bad. Huh. They must have lost an army. And what can the do for but we can't give them anything. Damn. And we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. If they lose another army, as in if this drops, we might be able to get that freaking fed, which would be really nice considering we're in this territory, though these territories would probably immediately get attacked by the uh, uh, by the border enemies. We would be then getting a nice border with Karazakarak, though, so we wouldn't have to worry about that. Hmm. Yes. All right, well, either way, let's start with Averland. How much do you want for this? 238 for military access? How much for the trade agreement? 3,000, not worth it. Uh, they'll probably offer it to us eventually. Let's do this, military access. I just want to grow the relationships with all of these nearby factions. And Welcome you can nearly get military allies. access for H28, eh? It's a little bit steep, considering, considering we need the money right now. I think we'll hold off on it. Although it will, well, then again, it'll pay for itself in only 10 turns. Yeah, fine, never mind. It's It'll pay for itself. And if it'll pay for itself, it's worth it. All right. And I believe, Sterling, you had something as well. No trade agreement with you, unfortunately, but a little bit of cash back, so, yeah. All right, there we go. Up to 2011, I swear that actually dropped at some point due to something, but <laughs> who knows what. Uh, let's see. Now, why are we ready to end the turn? We could probably delete this the uh, sparring chamber here, but what if we need some dwarf warriors in this army? Would we be willing to pay 2,000 gold right now? And the recruiter has it reduced as well, but if we get a recruiter back up to Karakazur with the recruitment reduction from the timber mill, plus the commandment there, we could recruit rangers for quite a bit cheaper. Hmm. Oh, it was getting Fimber Iron Hammer in here that uh, reduced the... Uh, uh, that uh, reduced our income. All right, all right, all right, let's end the turn. Let's end the turn for now. Let's see if these guys attack. I'm very tempted to get the Ekron Miners in here just in case. At the end of the day, minus 230 isn't so bad. 
And if these guys attack, it'll be a pretty major difference. And also, I'm sure that they'd be helpful on Ekron as the uh, sieges are fairly, or quite a bit more difficult nowadays. In SFO, I mean. And you could just have a pile of miners. Yeah, fine, you know what? Ooh. But what if... What if Skaven or Undead come this way? We'll probably need that more. Nah, nah, okay, yeah. I've convinced myself we're saving the miners. If we get attacked, we get attacked. We'll have to hope that the miners that are currently in Bitterstone can hold ground. And I'll say I wouldn't be... Ah, ah, looks like Glugzag moved back into Ekrand and Nubzub decided to stay there. Okay, interesting. Hmm. So he can't recruit there. I think what he's hoping is that Belagar goes for Nubzub rather than for Ekrand. Okay. We'll see about that. Settlement receives plague... Oh, no. No, 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 no. What kind of plague is this? Skaven plague. No, 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 no. We're getting the heck out of here. Uh, Constructor for about more construction costs. Lovely. Go figure for the construction. Grimly Coral Seeker is back. Savage Blow. Was Grimly the uh, the Lord of Carrick Hearn? I think it was. And he has... Oh, he has the extra research rate. Alrighty. Yeah, if anybody was wondering where the uh, Lord of Kara Kern was, I remember there was a comment. We deleted him temporarily as he, was, uh, he wasn't achieving anything. And it looks like, yes, the Wood Elves moved away. Beautiful. Fimber. So out of curiosity, we are currently at 135 research rate. If we delete you... We're back to... Yeah, we're still at 135. All right, so unless it drops next turn, we can continue doing this to get uh, additional research rate and just pick up every time one of these guys comes up, which is not anymore right now. But I'm sure we'll get it again in the future. Next up, is there anything to build? Matorka's got four turns, Karakazor one turn until we can upgrade the barley field, so we could always move there. Oh, wait, I missed Migdal and Galbarak. Well, let's upgrade the granary there, and... What do we go here? We could actually get a money territory, or we could start building one of the uh, one of the control territories, so that the income reduction isn't well super crazy. Hmm. Now, of course, it does feel like we'd need the main control building in Carrick Hearn rather than here, and I'm hoping that we won't need defenses here at least for a while. Hopefully, our allies in the north can still hold ground. But I guess we'll have to see about that as well. We could build the temporary Makaz Ungor here. I'm just not sure that I'm willing to spend all that much cash on it. And uh, you know what? Let's build the scrap mine for now. We'll build the uh, we'll build the refectory in Karakurn as soon as it's upgraded to tier three in a few turns. So, uh, Goral mine, scrap mine, yes, the deeper mine with more money first, and then constructor Furbra. We're gonna jump you over to Karakazor. Like so. And then we'll use that to upgrade the Karak Buftar buildings, and back to Karak Angazar afterwards when Matorka levels up. Next up, you are unable to reach Ekrand, but I think you can't go to Ekrand. You'll probably have to go to stop Nubzub from attacking Bitterstone. Well, then again, would he attack with one lord? We do have some units in here, so it might not be enough. Alrighty, and oh, before I forget, one of these guys has to perform some kind of action against Ekrand, per the grudge, as you guys have been reminding me. And it gives us 2,500 gold, which is pretty good. Uh, let's see, who would we want the least in our battle? I guess King Lun is the most hurt, but he also carries our glittering scales. Uh, our other thane carries the Master Rune of Spite, but we could always swap that out. For one turn. He's also full HP, whereas King Lan is hurt. But as I understand it, you won't be healing if you're outside of the settlement. And we could go for the full health guy instead. So that King Lan at least heals up. What if this fails? Alright, wait, let's see. Assault Garrison 60% success. You have 60% success. We can't lose the Master Engineer, and frankly, we can't lose the Runesmith, so it has to be one of you. I'm gonna be extremely annoyed if this fails. Mmm, let's go for Halk and half, I guess. Alright, come on. Wait, just out of curiosity. Okay, now that doesn't tell me anything. Uh, let's have you do it. Alright, wait. Yeah. 
And grudge removed. Okay, lovely. Hero action, success, and hey, you went up to level 12. A wrong put right, we get control plus three for all provinces as well. Uh, one of the oldest entries in the Dwarf Holds Book of Grudges has been struck at... Really? Well, I guess it's old in from a loreful perspective, but it's new for us since we just got it. And then Belagar, and you're moving into the siege. Yes. And I guess the question will be, Pyrrhic victory, whether we bother to build any uh, rams or towers. We could do we could do one turn and have two towers available for us. And we do have the grudge thrower to knock out enemy towers, though I do wonder how effective it'll be. Or we could try to charge like this. I'm a little bit wary of taking so much damage that uh, it'll be uh, bad. On the other hand, if this is the map that has the uh, uh, that has the blind spot, it won't matter at all. And we could just risk it and not waste the turn. And we could also risk losing Dragonhorn Mines to you. Because he's going to try to suicide upon it. I don't know how difficult it would be to bring him down. 4.5k. We have a very slow. Ooh, wait, I know what we could try to do. We could put another lord in here. Just temporarily. Let's go with you. Ancestral Blood Valet. Enemy hero success chance and ward save. Aler oh wait, no, Alaric was the uh, Alaric was the leader of the previous faction. I don't actually like his ancestral blood though. Alright, you go here, and I assume you don't have anything special here. Yeah, this all looks normal. Alright, stay right there, buddy. You can hold Dragonhorn Mine. Uh, you are going to March Stance, and yes, the Vigor will hurt, but it will be helpful nonetheless to have extra units here. I assume you can't join back into the army even though you're right beside our Lord. Nah, would have been nice though. Um, but as expected. If only we had had rank 12 for this. And I guess here we go again. Now, let's see if we can take Ekron. Uh, it'll be a Pyrrhic victory. We're definitely going to have to watch out for those towers doing a crazy amount of damage to us. But uh, we'll see. Banking on that blind spot. But if not, we'll see how much our grudge thrower can do in knocking down those towers. Alrighty, well, we are arrayed, and as I suspected, we are arrayed in the blind spot of this particular map. I did remember attacking Ekrand in previous campaigns, and I was almost sure that this was a blind spot map, which does work out extremely well for us. These towers may be extremely dangerous and have uh, these very, very wide firing lines, but we can outrange them with our single grudge thrower, destroy them from a distance, and then move in. Which is just perfect. Sorry to the AI, which can't do too much about this uh, about this particular blind spot territory. Now let's watch one of the towers go down, but I think we'll speed through the bombardment of the other towers. We are going to knock them all out as best we can with the ammunition that we have with our grudge thrower. And I would be curious to see whether it can in fact knock them all out by itself. All right, down goes one tower. That was actually anticlimactic, and it looked like uh, it just plain disappeared. Huh. I know that some towers, like, you can actually see them break apart and collapse. That one kind of meh. The Bretonian towers collapse pretty nicely. Anyway, that's one tower. These guys have 7,500 HP, so not nearly as much as the 40k of the walls. Also, appropriate number. Uh, let's speed this up, I'll bombard them, and then move in afterwards. I also want to point out that while we do have the blind spot, there is still this tower, which does apparently have the capability of firing down onto our units there. Good job to the AI for building it here, though, I gotta say. I think... Poss possibly it might have been better if what I had done was actually deploy the rest of our army all the way back here in the hopes that the AI didn't build this tower here because this is obviously dangerous to our units and uh, if it built other towers back there they'd be a lot easier to destroy with our rangers. This one's basically impossible to destroy up here unless... Now, I don't even I don't even think our grudge thrower can reach it up there. It's a really good position for a tower. 
At whatever point I ever get into defending this map, I'm gonna try to build this tower here and then see about defending the Victory Plaza. Well, after the walls, obviously. It'd be decent to fire down on the enemy from here as well, with, uh, with units that can arc shot. Hmm. I'm actually not sure I remember ever... Well, actually, I do remember a couple of times defending this particular territory for in siege battles, but honestly, there really aren't that many defensive siege battles in vanilla, though, as I understand, SFO does seek to increase that uh, by uh, having the AI uh, uh, actually attack you when you're entrenched behind walls. Anyway, as we can see, that tower is now firing down. We do have to be careful, but the rest of our units have now moved in and are going to start quarreling those walls. Lovely. All right, move up a little bit more. All the enemy towers have been destroyed, save that one that has zero HP. Now, there is one more left, but we'll be moving towards it as well. And it does look like the single grudge thrower is more than enough to take out these towers. It still has plenty of ammunition. Lovely. And here come the rangers. Time to take time to clear those walls as best we can. We're also going to wait for our reinforcing army with all of those miners to move in. Rather than just moving in our heroes and lords or our hammers and our dwarf warriors as they are quite hurt, and we're just going to use the uh, miners as a meat shield, which I do think will work out fairly well. In the meantime, of course, our lord and heroes are mm, trying to break through the gate. It's going to take them a while as it's got 30k HP itself. Um, but we still have plenty of targets for our quarrelers, and look at the, or our rangers rather, and look at all those arcing shots. Uh, beautiful. It is going to take them a while like this to kill enemy units, and this once again does make me wonder as to the effectiveness of accuracy. In this particular situation, maybe an increase in accuracy would be good, but I'm almost certain that ultra-high accuracy could be detrimental because of wasted shots. And the reason I'm considering accuracy so much is because there's a, uh, uh, there's a late-game tech upgrade to the... Uh, uh, to the rangers that increases their accuracy by 200. Now, now for artillery pieces, I would imagine the high accuracy would be great. But the fact is, these guys are essentially firing in such a way that multiple shots are probably hitting outside of where they're supposed to be hitting, but still hitting the enemy mobs. Because obviously you're not firing at a single unit. I suppose ultra high accuracy would be good if you're trying to snipe a lords. Or single entities in general. And though I somehow doubt that they're going to be missing too many shots if they're firing on something like a dragon or something like that. Anyway, I digress. A Lots more quarrelers are gonna work. I guess we can't see them quite uh, fire over the walls, but we can at least see their shots uh, go. And this is going to last quite a while. As long as the enemy is here and their towers can't fire down upon us and they have extremely limited range units of their own, we're absolutely going to take advantage of this. Of course, the enemy tower is firing down on us this entire time, looks to be focusing some of our hammerers here. We'll have to try to move them somewhere to hide at some point, but frankly, I, it might be better for it to fire on these guys since they're very low in terms of unit count here, rather than like the middle of a blob of rangers. Especially the hammerers are extremely heavy heavily armored and would probably take a lot less damage. Alrighty, and these guys move back up on those walls only to continue getting ripped apart by our rangers. And then away they go again. I'm actually not entirely sure why the AI tries to keep sending them up there. And there was also the possibility of taking at least some of our rangers, moving them up on the walls, and then having them fire down, but I figured it may not be needed here. And we still have to break through the gate, and the miners will help out with that in a little bit. But uh, while we still have ammunition, and while we still have targets on the inside of the settlement, we may as well take advantage.
Alrighty, and away they run. How many more enemy units do we have here? There are boar boys here, some spider riders, and more boar boys, and more boar boys. They have a significant amount of boar boys in here that we will have to deal with uh, that are just keeping away from the range of our quarrelers. It also looks like they have two units of trolls in there, plus their lord, and of course their two towers firing down on us, so it might not be a completely easy time taking the interior of the settlement once we're in here. Oh, that's a nice arc, though. Man, that's a very, that's a very, like, steep arc. Because it went right over this wall and right down behind it. It was almost like a mortar shot there, so good job to them. And back up on the walls you go, and back off you go again. <laughs> uh, though not for much longer, as the gate is now down to only 2.3k HP, we've also spread out our rangers into distinct little blobs so that they can find different angles to fire upon on the enemy. Should be getting a few more shots in there, but it will soon be time for the miners and the uh, heroes and lord to actually fight in melee. Although I suppose if the enemy tries to move back in to fight our miners and co, we still have plenty of range support. Poor AI, it really can't do anything about this. But then what is it supposed to do? Does it leave the wall and allow us to move in? And we could always, as I said, get our rangers to uh, climb the walls and then fire down on the enemy, which is generally a pretty darn effective tactic if you can manage it. And there we go, finally, we've broken through the gate, the miners are moving in, Belagar as well as his uh, reinforcing little lord here, a recruiter Scaf Hogmog. I guess for the rest of this battle, we're just going to watch the miners and co in melee, as obviously it's a little bit more interesting than just watching shots arc over the walls. I think maybe next time we have one of these sort of sieges, we'll pro I'll probably just speed up over the uh, uh, over the shot arcs. I just well, since this is probably the first, I guess this is sort of the first time that we've actually managed to do this. We could have watched it once, but then uh, later on we'll probably consider it to be a little bit closer to bombardment from artillery, which I generally like to speed up uh, than an actual fight. Anyway, looks like our miners are moving in. They're just here to provide some meat shields and to make sure that our lords aren't the ones getting completely surrounded and are the only ones taking hits. Although I'm sure over time our lords would have probably still defeated most of the units in here. Belagar trying to duel a troll while surrounded by those savage orcs. And he does manage to knock him out. Very nice, Belagar. Alrighty, and more units moving in to try to reinforce the enemy lines against our miners, and the Boar Boys are finally here as well, though they're taking quite a few shots. We have turned our uh, uh, our rangers specifically to target the Boar Boys. Also popping in that Rune of Wrath and Ruin just on the edge of the enemy formation, though, so that it doesn't kill our own miners. I actually didn't double check whether that actually damages your own units. It's been a while since I've played Dwarfs. Uh, Rune of Wrath and Ruin, large explosion with knockback effects, strong versus multiple units. And it does not say target enemies or anything like that, so yeah, it probably does damage our own, so it's good that we kept that away. I also feel like I've seen it damage one of our Dwarf Warrior units, or our single Dwarf Warrior units, at some point earlier in the campaign. Anyway, it looks like we're now moving well into the settlement. Our Thunderers have actually entered uh, inside the settlement together with a few more units of Rangers, and as we can see, they're gunning down those Orc Error Boys who were arcing over the walls and firing back. And you know, how dare they. Most of the enemy units are now routing, or... Uh, uh, or otherwise shattered, and we're going to just move up here, take out these ramps, and then move towards the enemy Boar Boys and Lord as they wait where they're uh, close to their victory plaza. And I guess for this we can speed it up just a little bit. Ooh, nice shot from the enemy tower. It looked like it knocked out like five or so, at least three. I'm not sure whether those uh, corpses have disappeared. Oh, there's another one. There's probably another one out there. 
And I've knocked out a decent amount of rangers with that shot, which is, I guess, one of the good things that it was ab about it attacking hammers and dwarf warriors below. Actually, speaking of those hammers and dwarf warriors, what are we looking at here? Now, the dwarf warriors are down to 17 units. It's also now attacking our grudge thrower blob. I tried to hide it behind this wall in the hopes that it couldn't reach them there, but unfortunately not the case, and it can, in fact, reach these hammers there as well. There is nowhere that's safe from this tower except for outside of its range, apparently. And we are starting to run low on those units, so we gotta be careful. And also, they obviously don't heal quickly, so I guess it's a good job to the AI for attacking it. Even if it doesn't really help it win in this particular situation. But it is the thing, I guess, that annoys us the most. And in the sense that it doesn't help them win, I mean that uh, if it were to reduce our ranger numbers significantly, that might actually help it. Or even our, uh, or even our miners here would uh, would actually be somewhat helpful as well as we're using them in melee. But it ain't doing that in favor of attacking our units that are already hurt and trying to destroy them. Anyway, down goes that ramp really quickly. I think the miners probably have a bonus to damaging it since they can attack walls. Uh, the enemy boar boys have moved in, but they're getting absolutely wrecked by our lords. There's that flash bomb coming down as well to reduce their melee defense, as well as their speed. That we don't really care about that. Down to zero melee defense, so even the miners will be able to bring them down. Although I do imagine that the lion's share of the kills still goes to the lords and heroes, and I'm sure the rangers helping out by firing over this little wall are uh, doing a great job as well. Ooh, another shot from that tower, knocking out a few more miners, but we don't care about them. And once again, I am very happy that we ended up building those miners as a temporary force. And they're coming in handy multiple times. Ooh, that was a nice shot. It looked like it knocked off like 25% HP from this unit. Alrighty, what do we have left here? A uh, unit of boar boys running around all the way in the background, the remnants of that spider rider unit, and a few units that are rallying, plus the enemy lord who appears to be coming down and getting ready for a duel with Belagar. Well, maybe not so much a duel, because we're going to move the ancestor ghosts in. A nice job, take out that last boar boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that tower looked like it hit the enemy lord in the back of the head. It would have been amazing if, if that just took the enemy lord's head off. And honestly, considering it's the orcs and uh, their general accuracy, it, uh, it wouldn't have even been surprising. I'm just imagining like a, uh, just like a big lead up to a battle and the enemy lord just moves forward and then one of his own towers or trebuchets or something fires a huge stone and just hits him in the back and just kills him instantly. It would be very worky. Kind of amusing. Uh, now in terms of what the enemy lord has got going for him, he's got about two-thirds of his HP left. He's done a few hits on Belagar though, so he did pop our rune of oath and steel to buff our... You heard me. To buff us a little bit. <laughs> uh, but um, for, of course this guy's gonna get surrounded and killed in a few seconds. He doesn't have much of a chance. Does he have magical attacks? He does not, so he's also not super threatening to the ghost units either. Alrighty, unfortunately the miners are actually kind of getting in the way, preventing our uh, Thane from getting in there, but with that the enemy war boss is down to 500 HP. Uh, the... huh. Did those boar boys... oh, they're actually moving around. They didn't go to help their lord, they want to fight these rangers in melee. Well, more power to them, I suppose. We did send these rangers to try to capture uh, this victory location. And if they want to fight them... They can, but only for a few seconds, as I believe uh, that's the chain route. We're going to end the battle immediately, because obviously we don't need to chase the enemy, and of course we don't want to hurt ourselves with units, with our own units, plus we have these towers firing down this entire time. I do wonder how many uh, units of dwarf warriors remain. I believe it was six. One, two, three, four, five, and I think there's a sixth one hidden right behind that uh, building, as in inside the wall there, kind of like our... Uh, uh, kind of like our units are back here. At the very least, the hammers and these guys are fine. We'll see about the dwarf warriors. They did get focused down a little bit by that tower.
All right, a little bit annoyed that we just couldn't get away from that tower that uh, was firing on the Dwarf Warriors and didn't realize that uh, at six units remaining, uh, that would delete the unit. But I guess we were going to replace them with Rangers anyway. And I guess we could put the Ekrand Miners in there temporarily or the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass or whatever the uh, Regiment of Renan of Dwarf Warriors is is called and just in here temporarily anyway on the bright side though that is Ekrand and at the end of the day I'm very much willing to trade a single unit of dwarf warriors to write a grudge as old as this and oh wow another dwarf tinkerer's shop this place is going to be generating a very decent amount of cash isn't it uh what do we have here uh do we want to build hmm I guess considering we have all these already, I probably don't want to delete them now. Plus five armor for all recruited units in this province. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Does that stack? If we get a bunch of these, if we get four of these in a single province, we get plus 20 armor, including on rangers. Damn, that might mean there's a good reason to actually re-recruit rangers later into the game with much higher armor. If, the, if this, in fact, does stack. If it doesn't stack and it's only plus five, I wouldn't re-recruit uh, high-level units, but uh, we'll certainly have to think about it. And in the meantime, I guess we're going to go for constr... Well, actually, growth. Uh, was gonna build the public order thing, but I suppose if we uncollect the income for a little while, the tinkerer's shops won't be all that useful here anyway. Hmm. In which case, we're still probably better off building the barley fields. All right, barley field one, and I guess we're going to delete you as well. Uh, oh, we can build the... Wait. We can build miners with blasting charges from this. Why did I build regular miners? I think we didn't have this building before, and which is why. All righty, that's fine. Province secured Western Badlands. Let's also immediately go into construction cost reduction masters of stone and steel we'll swap it out afterwards delete you for now i think i'm just wondering if if belagar leaves this place and we get attacked by the exiles of corn how many factions are you at war with quite a few right now uh, but they're all minor factions with the exception of Khemri, which means that they may still be considering themselves to be pretty darn strong. Hmm. Maybe we should leave that as it is. Well, more importantly, though, we now have Rally the Hold, so diplomatic relations with dwarves and global recruitment duration, should we need to get more rangers. And most importantly, of course, ooh... 10% physical resistance for army, that's pretty damn good as well. But it is the tunnel warfare that we want right now. Missile strength for rangers, melee attack and melee defense for rangers. Too bad the plus 200 ammunition is for miners only, and not rangers. Uh, but I guess that would be, uh, that would be a little bit obnoxious. I guess. There we go, rangers, what are we at now? 39, 49, not too bad for a regular non-Bugmans variety ranger. At rank 9 and with Bugmans, uh, they should be very, very decent in melee. Pretty excited about that. Unfortunately, with that, though, we are out of time. The Bloody Hands are not quite destroyed, but they will... Uh, uh, they will have a self-deletion attack at Dragonhorn Mines at the start of next turn, as the AI is programmed to do so. Otherwise, presuming that the Exiles of Corn don't declare war on us here, we begin the walk towards Eight Peaks next episode. Pretty excited about that, and finally taking it. Was originally hoping to rush it, but uh, taking it at turn 20 or so I think won't be so bad. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.